Hi, it's Ruby and Payson here. Today we are Skyping around a wildlife park um, in Christchurch. And we're just about to call Skype him right now. Hi. His name's Toby. Here goes Thomas. You guys set the camera so we can see you. Oh, hi, hi Toby! Toby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just our little buddy wanted to go off. Guys, have fun. It's, yeah. Hi, um, I'm Peyton, and I'm Ruby. Um, Good to meet you. Yeah. Um, we would just like to ask, what is your role at the zoo? Um, I'm the education manager. So uh, here at Arana, that's kind of like a principal at your school. I have ten teachers working for me, and I do a lot of the teaching myself as well. But before this, I've worked a lot with the animals as well. So I've sort of worked both sides of what we do in the park. Oh, okay. Um, food. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's just pop you on the ground. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'm just uh, a little bit of okay. dragon. Uh, we would just like to say thank you for coming because this is such a big opportunity to Skype. No problem. We're um, probably the only zoo in New Zealand that you can Skype. Yeah, all the you're, are you're the first yeah. person. You're the first yeah. person actually said yes, so we're really excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were just wondering if you had any questions for us before you, um, before we be begin with the questions that we prepared for you. No, that's fine. Ask away. Okay. How long have you been talking, taking <laughs> animals in? Uh, the park has been here for 35 years, oh. and I've been here for nearly nine, I think. But the park's changed a few times over those 35, so we have more of a focus on animals near in New Zealand and New Zealand animals these days. We started with African. Okay. Okay. Um, how many endangered animals do you have in the park? It would probably be around, we have 450 in total, that's 70 different species, and probably 350 to 400 of those animals would be classed as endangered. Oh, okay, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> how many different types of endangered animals do you have in, the zoo, in your zoo? Like the different types of species? I think, I think we'll be looking at probably about 60 out of the 70 different species we have would be injured. That's the main reason we have them here. Uh, okay. okay. Um, what kind of state were the anim your animals in when you got them? Um, like, for example, did they come from a shelter where they were mistreated or from, or did, or from zoos where they were well looked after? Almost all of them actually come from other zoos. So we work with zoos around the world to be able to breed the animals we have here. There are ooh, about five or six animals in our endangered species programs that have come from, uh, we call them rehabilitated animals. So yeah, yeah. some of them came from really bad homes. One of them was a Siamian gibbon and they're critically endangered. He was a pet chained up inside a truck driver's truck for about seven years. So there are problems working with an animal like that because he had all sorts of behavioural problems. He was violent. He was aggressive. We didn't know if he'd make a good dad. As it turns out, he has. <laughs> the importance of that is that he represents genetics that we don't have in zoos. Because he came from the wild, that's a whole new family and a whole new breeding program we can start because he's not one of our animals to start with. Oh, okay. So most of them, almost all of them, come from other zoos and we all work together. When we need to breed more, we move them around the world. Um, we try and stay within Australasia, but if we need to, we'll go as far away as Europe to get the animals. Wow, oh. that's far. Yeah. Just excuse yeah. me for a minute. <laughs> just, no problem. Uh, just our pitch. Just our um, <laughs> uh, um are, you, are they endangered animals for all over the world or just from New Zealand? Um, all over the world, but working from some very special areas. So 
Where we started, we focused on African animals and New Zealand animals. Oh, We've awesome. increased the number of New Zealand ones. We work with lots and lots of them now. And now we work with a lot from Indonesia and Malaysia as well because it's close to New Zealand. We can support these animals. We're yeah. close enough to be able to put the animals back in the wild if things change there so that we can do it. So that's things like Sumatran tiger, Simon Gibbons, those sort of animals. Yeah. It just so happens that I come from South Africa, so... Oh, cool! <laughs> yeah. You know most of their animals. Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> do endangered animals come to your zoo often? Um, most of the injured ones we, we, that would possibly come here are going to be native species. Oh, okay. Because we breed a huge number of native species, we don't actually take in the ones that people would bring. We redirect people to the Department of Conservation or um, some animal specialists we know. There's a possibility that those animals are injured because they're sick and if our keepers handle them, they could pass those diseases on to endangered species here in the park. Oh, okay. There are a few exceptions when we're dealing with geckos and skinks. Some of those we have somewhere that we can put so that they're not going to come in contact with yeah. our breeding ones. But most of the time, if it's sick or injured, we won't touch it. We'll send it to a vet or to a specialist that we work with. Okay. Do they cope well in the zoo? They do, actually. Most of the animals we have here are born in captivity, so they manage very well in captivity. Oh. There's very, very few of them that have come from the wild, and even those ones get used to it quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're way bigger than the zoos up in the juice, so um, yeah. what's called an open range, so we have huge great big paddocks and a huge amount of space for the animals to be able to move around it. Only half of that is even visible by the public. The other half is we, we do our breeding programs for cheetah and rhino and things like that. Okay. Um, why are endangered animals better off in a zoo than in a, nat in a natural habitat? Um, really, they're better off in the natural habitat. But the problem is that they, for whatever reason, because people are destroying their habitat, or because um, they're being hunted or poached or, you know, whatever the problem is, we have them here mainly as an insurance policy. If something should happen in the wild, we can have some animals here that we can put back there to replace them. Okay. Hopefully, while they're here, we can teach people about why these animals are endangered as well. So hopefully we're changing things so that we can put these animals back in the wild. But I totally agree. The wild animals, the place for them is in the wild. The yeah. problem is, there's not enough of the wild left for all yeah. of these animals to survive. Yeah. Are there any are there any negative about keeping these animals in the zoo? I think there are. Um, I don't think they're as big as the issues involved in not having them in the zoo. But some animals live in really big herds. Springbok will be familiar with. They used to be yeah. herds of about fifteen million. So you can have huge numbers of them. We can't do that. We can't keep that many of them. So there are some things we do here that are a bit fake compared to what they do in the wild. Yeah. So it would be nicer if they were in the wild, but I think the choice between them putting up with how they live here and not being around at all, I think it's better to have them in captivity here. Yeah. Um, what are you doing to increase the numbers of these animals? Um, with the endangered ones, we have sort of four main ways we're working for them. We have breeding programs where we are actively breeding these animals ourselves. We have holding programs where we hold these animals for other zoos to continue breeding. We don't breed Sumatran tigers. They do at Auckland. They do in Taronga and Sydney. But if they keep breeding them, they run out of room. So oh, yeah. other zoos have to take those animals and hold on to them. And these holding ones, it doesn't mean that they won't get to breed. It just means that we haven't got the right partner for them right now. So we do breeding, we do holding. With our native species, we also do breed for release. And those are animals that we're specifically breeding here for release directly out into the wild. Yeah. And last thing we're doing is what's called advocacy or education, teaching people how they're hurting these animals and why they're endangered and trying to change it so that they don't do that so much. So those are the four ways that we're trying to do it. When it comes to breeding, we breed rhino, cheetah, giraffe, Simon Gibbons, spider monkey, kiwi, 
Simitar, Pondorix, and Zebra. Mm. So actively breeding all of those. We hold Sumatran tiger, African wild dog, uh, two species of lima, we hold Asian shortcore otters, we hold sable antelope, water buck, and these are for breeding programs at other zoos. For breeding for release, we have Pataki, which is the uh, brown teal, Theo, which are blue duck. There's only about 2,500 of those left in the world. And Kakariki as well. And we obviously have a whole lot more that we're not breeding, which are here purely for advocacy and education, like our care. Um, mm. Down here in the South Island, they get a really bad name for pulling your car apart and stuff like that. <laughs> it's really because of the way people deal with them in the first place. If people didn't feed them, the care wouldn't be there. They'd be too busy looking for food instead of pulling your car apart. So we make yeah. the problem. Place. So that's why we keep those ones. That's the only reason they bug them is because they want the it food. Is. Yeah, <laughs> it's enough to know that they can train people and give them food. Yeah. <laughs> why do you think? Why do you think it is important that we save these animals? Um, I think there's a lot of angles to that. One of them is that the planet only works with a huge variety of different animals. We need everything from bacteria through to elephants to make the world work, to continue to keep it livable for us, as well as for all of these other animals. I think there's also an argument that these animals have as much right to live on the planet as we do. The only reason they're vanishing is what we are doing. So we have a responsibility to make sure that they stick around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they're the two major ones. Yeah. yeah. If you um, could give your readers one message, what would that be? Oh, keeping it down to one is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> what we do is um, we actually have six different areas that we try and pass on messages in. And these are things like when it comes to the Sumatran tiger, we're passing on not buying products that contain palm oil because that's behind them losing their forest. They chop down the forest to plant palm, to grow palm oil, to put in our food, and it's actually not that healthy for us too. So there's another issue there. Yeah. Uh, Kia, we want them to stop feeding them. When we talk about the otters, we have a really simple message about um, getting people to wash their car on the grass. That way the soap and stuff doesn't run into waterways. So one message is really, really tricky. We have a whole bunch broken out and different people were even at different feeds with different animals is the way we try and do it. Okay. Um, thank you so much for Skyping with us. It really means a lot and it's definitely going to help us yeah. with our website. Excellent. It's been my pleasure. Those are really good questions. Yeah. And um, tell your teacher too, anytime that your, your students want to, just yeah. let us know in advance and we can set it up again. We are the only zoo in New Zealand that can do this, so it's our pleasure to talk to you all. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank mm -hmm. you.